antenna is probably the most important part of making a wireless connection. The three main types you'll be seeing. Omnidirectional antennas, they typically look like just a stick just one long element and omnidirectional they're emitting into all directions around them equally that's if i'm looking onto the horizontal plane that would just be an even distribution to all sides seen from the side not so much if seen from the side there will be a distinct direction we'll see one in a moment Patch, panel, and sector antennas are somewhat directional. Think piece of cake, something like 45, 60 degrees, maybe 90 degrees opening, looking like a piece of cake or a wide beam or something like that. And then lastly, highly directional antennas are grids, parables, dishes. They make really sharp beams. Ultimately, not just a line, they still have a certain opening beam width, but they're quite directed. It's almost, it's like a torch that you direct in, in one particular direction. Then there's antennas that are so small that we can barely see them. They're built into stuff. They're print antennas. On the left here, you see this typical meandering, like a winding river print. Um, that's a Wi-Fi print antenna on a very small IoT device here. Same in mobile phones, there isn't a lot of space and you have to fit in a lot of antennas, Wi-Fi, cellular antennas, Bluetooth. So they're printed antennas, very small. We typically don't see them. Here's another popular simple antenna. It's a monopole antenna. It's just a quarter wavelength piece of wire with four counterparts and the ground plane. Described many, many years ago, 125 years ago, and it gives us a gain of 5 dBi theoretically when we build it properly. The monopole antenna, and this is an omnidirectional antenna, Seen from the top, it would be a circle. Seen from the side, and here in this 3D view, um, we often say it's a donut. If a donut is something you're eating, well, you'll recognize the donut structure here. Seen from the side, there is distinct directions in which it sends its power. Seen from the top, it's a circle. Uh, Note that it sometimes tilts a little bit. This preferred direction to the side doesn't always have to be straight horizontal. It can go up or down. That's what we call tilt in antennas. The parabole antenna based on a really, really, really old idea. Mathematically, if you find a surface for which each incoming beam is reflected to the same point. Imagine you're putting like a dish into the sun, like a mirror dish into the sun, and then that it would concentrate all the sunbeams into one point. That's actually something we're using in solar cookers, solar ovens. Then that surface that's described as a parable. The mathematical, the finding of this is centuries old, 200 BC. I found as the date for that. As a radio reflector, also more than 100 years old, that is basically what a dish, a parable antenna is doing. And you find them in closed types, like those dishes you, sometimes, you also use for TV and radio signals. You find them in grid forms. Benefit here is not so much wind resistance. When the wind blows, dishes need to be really, really strong to stand that power of the wind. Grids are better here and they do the same 
for the electrical, the electromagnetic signal. So that's a grid antenna. Here's another small one that you often find built into mobile phones or IoT devices and stuff. It's a two-dimensional antenna. It's, it's got a plane, but also like an F shape on top of it, often found, like I said, in embedded boards and such. It's small. You can make it a lot smaller than, say, a quarter wavelength, so you can fit it into these small devices. Here's a picture of how these different antennas go into a mobile phone. A collinear antenna is an, a combination of several pieces of dipole pieces combined together in interchanging polarities, so their effects actually add up. That's why we call them collinear, many linear elements in one, and that gives us an omnidirectional antenna. This is by far the most common type we see for omnidirectional uses. And from the outside, they just look like a stick, basically. This is the radiation pattern for the Omni antenna, we've seen it before, roughly like a donut, circle from above, and a squeezed something seen from the side directing into two distinct favorite directions. Horizontal, or if it's off the horizontal, we speak of a tilt. This is what commercial sector antennas look like. They're a combination of several patches inside. So they're actually like a long square and the resulting pattern is a wide beam into one distinct direction. Wide beam can mean anything from 30 degrees, 44, 45, 60 degrees, something like that. This would be the radiation pattern for a uh, such a sector antenna wide seen from the in the horizontal plane here and looking at the elevation and for the two polarities you see a relatively sharp a relatively thin beam width here's another pattern for many of you might have seen the sort of patch on the wall type of antenna often with the access point integrated into it this would be the radiation patterns for such a type antenna. Note that it's actually not strongest towards the center, but the directions of strongest signals are kind of off center around it. So don't direct it directly at where you want to go. It, it spreads out the signal. It's meant to ideally sit on a ceiling, perhaps on a wall, but its main usage would be overhead on the ceiling. A little comment on choice of antennas. Don't always go for the strongest. Um, here's an example of we've chosen a very, very strong directional antenna. But if we want to hit all of this building here, we actually don't want such a strong directional antenna. We want a spread. We want a wider beam width. Probably looking at this picture, we want 60 to 90 degrees, not a thin line. We want to have a relatively weak directional behavior in order to hit all the flaws of this building. Here's one more little um, look at how we're choosing antennas. Let's say we have this case, we have a person behind the house. This is who we want to reach. We have an omni antenna behind that building. Obviously, that's not a very good solution. Our first reaction is, well, bring it up, bring it onto a tower. Um, that's somewhat better. However, now we have the problem that we're missing the receiving side. We're missing the user. Our next reaction to that is we'll use an omnidirectional with a tilt down. 
that's better. However, most of our power is still going into directions where we don't need it at all. So our next improvement would be to use a sector antenna instead of the tilted omni. Make such drawings when you're planning antennas. They're very, very useful. Just pen and paper. Try to, you need to know where your users are, where you are on the receiving end of your signal. You need to know where you want to put your antenna, what places are available, accessible to you. And then you just make drawings and until you find the good idea for what type of antenna would be best to choose. Here's a sector antenna again. And one more reminder, very often these days, you actually see antenna and access point integrated into one or it's kind of like the other way around. The antenna has been hidden inside the, the access point. It's integrated somewhere and the whole thing comes in one enclosure. And these commercial sector antennas, they can have more or less complicated patterns. Look at them when you deploy a specific type and check whether the drawing you just made kind of fits together with the device that you are deploying. So look at those patterns and also reminder, a good wireless device antenna or integrated access point antenna comes with this information. Cheap home user stuff often doesn't. If at all possible, try to use equipment that gives you this information.